With so much happening during a race, knowing what to look out for and how to manage a full race in F1 Manager 23 is key. In this video, I'm going to run through each part of an entire race in F1 Manager 23, and I'll show you the most important areas to keep an eye on, along with tips on how to manage your fuel, your tyres and your ERS. First thing I want to look at is tyre management, and this is possibly the most crucial area of management that can really affect the race outcome. Good tyre management can really boost your driver's performance throughout a race, and can help you easily overtake some cars through good pit stop management and strategy. I won't touch on the initial pre-race strategy too much, instead I want to focus on managing your tyres and tyre wear during the race, and all of this can be done from the pace commands during any race. Your pace commands dictate how aggressive or conservative you ask your driver to be on track. More aggressive commands will lead to potentially faster lap times, but much more tyre wear. Conservative strategies will help to preserve tyre life, making them last longer. While looking at your tyre wear during a race, you'll see a graph which is made up of different colours. These solid blocks of colour indicate the expected tyre wear during each stint, and there's also a white line which tracks in a similar direction to the block of colour, which is your actual tyre wear. If the white line is trending above the colour block, it means your driver is wearing their tyres slower than anticipated, and this will mean your tyres will last longer, allowing you to either pit later or increase your pace commands to push harder. If the white line is trending below the colour block though, it means your tyres are wearing faster than they should, and this will negatively affect your strategy as you may need to pit sooner for fresher tyres. There is also a light horizontal bar that runs the entire length of the graph, and this kind of indicates the danger territory of tyre wear. If your tyres enter this area, they'll risk being punctured, or your driver losing control due to low grip, so really try to avoid going into this danger zone if possible. As well as using the pace commands to dictate your driver's tyre wear due to how aggressive they're pushing, there is another factor to how fast your tyres will wear in F1 Manager 23, and that's the tyre temperature. You can view your tyre temperature during a race using the car info panel, and just like in F1 23 or in real world racing, various actions can impact your tyre temperatures, and in turn, your tyre temperatures will affect the wear rate of your tyres. If you're driving more aggressively, driving close to another car, or even using wet tyres on a drying track, all of these will increase your tyre temps. But if you drive more conservatively or drive in clean air with no car in front of you, this can help to decrease your tyre temperatures. The outcome of temperature changes will impact the wear rate of your tyres, so if your tyres are getting too hot for example, they'll generally wear faster and your driver will also start to lose grip. If your tyres are too cold or not up to temperature, your driver will also lose grip causing them to slide around on track and this sliding can artificially weigh your tyres a bit faster. Ideally, you'll want to be aiming for the optimal tyre temperatures as much as possible during a race, as optimal temperatures will give your driver the highest levels of grip and it will also keep the wear rate relatively stable. Next up I want to look at fuel management, and this isn't as tricky to manage as tyres but can be just as critical, especially if you run out of fuel towards the end of a race which can cause a DNF. The first decision you have with fuel management is how much starting fuel your driver will have. You can choose to underfuel them which means putting in less fuel than is required to finish a race, and this will force your driver to have to conserve fuel during the race at some point to make it to the end. Generally, this is how most real-world F1 teams operate, but you can also overfuel your driver if you want to drive more aggressively throughout a race. This strategy can be good if you're planning an aggressive two or three stop strategy, as it will utilize the speed of the soft tires. You can manage the fuel levels of each driver during a race by issuing commands in the fuel tab. These act in a similar way to pace commands, but primarily affect the fuel load. The commands you have at your disposal are you can push which will decrease your lap time, but use the most amount of fuel per lap. Balance gives you pretty consistent lap times and average fuel usage. And conserve will slow your lap times down a bit, but it will save the most amount of fuel per lap. You can keep an eye on your current fuel load by looking at the red or green number in the fuel tab. If it's green, it means you have excess fuel, and if it's red, it means you don't have enough fuel to finish the race. Your goal is to ensure the fuel number stays positive and green by the end of the race. It's not really a problem if it goes red during a race at some point, especially if you're pushing hard to overtake or putting in some fast laps, however it will mean you'll need to conserve fuel at a later stage of the race. 
You can push harder when you're trying to overtake a car or during an in-lap or an out-lap before or after a pit stop, or if you're trying for the fastest lap. You should really conserve fuel if you're stuck behind another car or in a DRS train or during a safety car. If you do run out of fuel during a race, your driver will simply stop on track as refueling isn't allowed in Formula 1. Your driver will then not finish the race and end with a DNF, which is pretty much the worst outcome to a race weekend, and running out of fuel is a silly mistake to make. That said, I've done it numerous times playing F1 Manager 22 and 23, and when it happens it's the most frustrating thing. But now I've spoken about tyres and fuel management, which are genuinely easy concepts to understand. You push harder and you use more fuel than tyres. Next, I want to talk about managing ERS. And this is a little bit trickier, although it has been improved over last year's game, which was even more confusing. Managing your ERS isn't quite as simple as turning it up to use more or turning it down to use less, although that same principle actually applies, but there is a bit more maths involved. You can set different ERS modes throughout a race with each one using the ERS in a different way. In last year's game, the deploy mode was split into three different modes, which were overtake, defend and deploy, but that's gone in F1 Manager 23. Instead, there's just a single deployment mode, and there is also the addition of the ERS battle assist option. With removal of the overtake and defend ERS modes, F1 Manager 23 introduced ERS battle assist. In this year's game, you can select your driver to use deploy, and then that'll let them burn around two megajoules of ERS per lap, However, with this mode selected, they'll use the ERS throughout the lap to try and put in the best lap time possible. If you want your driver to use the ERS to actually overtake or defend, you also need to enable the ERS battle assist. This option will tell your driver to use the ERS more strategically to overtake or defend against other drivers. So when you're trying to overtake a car, ensure you have enough battery stored and then enable both the deploy ERS mode and the ERS battle assist to really maximize your chances of an overtake. If though you have some clean air or you're going for a hot lap or a really fast in lap or out lap, you can simply enable the deploy mode and leave ERS battle assist disabled. This will result in the overall fastest lap times your driver can put in. And then you have the neutral deployment mode. This will try to keep the battery state stable. Your driver will still use some ERS, but they'll also allow it to recover throughout the lap. This is the mode you'll be using most often during a race. The harvest mode will limit your driver from using the RS, instead they'll actively charge the battery and this is good to use if you're stuck behind another car or you want to charge your ERS for an overtake attempt. There's now also a top up mode as well which is similar to the neutral state but it's prioritised to kind of try and top your battery up a little bit over a full course of a lap. But where things get a little more confusing with ERS management is the speed at which the battery is depleted and refilled. This is indicated by the number to the right of each deployment mode. For example, the deploy mode drains the battery by two megajoules per lap, neutral keeps things relatively stable, and harvest recovers one megajoule a lap. The new top-up mode recovers a tiny bit of ERS without slowing your driver down as much as if they were harvesting. So as a general rule of thumb, it will take around a lap to maybe two laps to fully drain your battery using the deploy mode, depending at which track you're at but you'll recover ERS much slower. It will take around four whole laps to fully recover a fully depleted battery using the harvest mode. During this time, you'll be vulnerable to being overtaken. So try to plan your harvesting laps for a time where you aren't being closely followed by other cars, or if you do have cars around you, maybe try to use the top up mode periodically to try and recover a small bit of battery here and there. Now, it's right at the very beginning of a race where you'll set your race strategy and choose your pit stop timing. However, there is a lot that can happen during a race in F1 Manager 23 that can affect the lap that you pit on. You may want to change your pit stop timing if a safety car comes out, it starts to rain, maybe you're stuck in traffic or your tire wear is better or worse than anticipated. Or you may pit earlier or later to overcut or undercut another driver. Each of these events are solid reasons for adjusting your pit stop timing. But let's remove all of those variables from the equation for a moment, as the real dictator for when you pit is your tyre life. As I mentioned earlier, you should be actively managing your tyre wear throughout a race, and the ideal time to pit is just before the tyre goes into the white bar that runs across the bottom of the tyre wear graph, which indicates around 30% or so of remaining tyre life. 
You'll be notified by your race engineer during a race when you're approaching your pit window, so you don't need to go into a race remembering exactly which lap to pit on. The pit window is a small window of a few laps indicating your planned pit stop time. Depending on your tire life remaining, you can force a pit stop earlier or later than planned. You can even completely miss your planned pit window if you're doing really, really well on tire wear. As I mentioned, pitting under a safety car is a great strategy call if it works for your race strategy. A regular pit stop will cost you just over 20 seconds on average, but when a safety car is on track or there's a virtual safety car, that time is reduced dramatically. This is because all other cars are lapping slower due to the safety car, and you'll lose much less time during a pit stop. However, this strategy only really works if the safety car comes out close to your pit window. If you've only been on your tires for two or three laps and a safety car comes out, it probably isn't worth pitting again. But if a safety car comes out a few laps before you're scheduled to pit, then it's definitely worth considering pitting. Also, when battling a car on track, a pit stop window is a great tool to use to try and force an overtake. You could try to either undercut or overcut the car in front of you. These are terms for pitting earlier or later than cars around you to gain an advantage. In principle, an undercut will allow you to pit earlier than the car in front, which will put you out on track with fresher and potentially faster tyres at least a lap before the car you're racing. During that lap, you can put in a faster lap time on fresher tyres to try and leapfrog the car in front when they do pit. This also works really well if you're being held up by a slow car. An overcut is the exact opposite. This strategy keeps you out on track longer than a car that pits before you. This will work well if pitting would put your car out in slower traffic. You can then use the clean track in front to your advantage to put in faster lap times to jump the car that's already pitted. Overcutting also gives you a tire advantage later in the race, as the tires that you switch to will be fresher than a car that's pitted a couple of laps before you, as they would have already completed at least one lap on those tires. If you can stay out a few laps longer than other cars, you may be able to attack them easier using your fresher tires later in the race. Now hopefully these tips from managing a race in F1 Manager 23 will help you run successful races. If you're unsure about anything during a race, you should use one of our top beginner tips for F1 Manager 23, and that is to pause the action and take your time. This will let you think about each decision rather than making rushed strategy calls. You can also run practice races using the new race replay feature, as these let you compete in individual race events outside of career mode and a great place to test your strategy. I'd really recommend checking out our top tips video for F1 Manager 23, where I talk about the most important areas of this year's game in more detail and provide a few handy tips for career mode and for genuinely enjoying this year's F1 Manager game. But for now guys, enjoy this video and I will see you on track.